Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be about five sci-fi and fantasy series that I would like to start in 2022. So of course, you know, I have these grand plans to read most of these in 2021 and that just didn't happen. So I decided, you know, I, I don't love making TBRs for myself, but I think this would be a small enough amount where I like can achieve this and you know, I think it would be fun to have small goals for myself for the next years. <laughs> Before we get started, leave some sort of sci-fi or fantasy emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here. So I guess we'll start with the two sci-fi series that I have, and these are in no particular order. So the first one I'll talk about is Embers of War by Gareth L. Powell. So I think they are making a TV show of this series. I could be confusing it with something else, but if I'm <laughs> remembering that correctly, then, you know, it's something I definitely want to read the series before watching a potential show. And this is one that I think just sounds fantastic. So we have a sentient warship that was built for violence, but following a brutal war, Trouble Dog is disgusted by her role in a genocide. Stripped of her weaponry and seeking to atone, she joins the House of Reclamation, an organization dedicated to rescuing ships in distress. When a civilian ship goes missing in a disputed system, Trouble Dog and her new crew of loners, captained by Sal, are sent on a rescue mission. Meanwhile, light years away, we have an intelligence officer who's tasked with locating a poet who was aboard the missing spaceship. What the officer doesn't know is that this person, this poet, is not the person who she appears to be. A straightforward rescue turns into something more dangerous as Trouble Dog and our characters find themselves at the center of a conflict that could engulf the entire galaxy. If she's to save her crew, Trouble Dog is going to have to remember how to fight. So this definitely seems like a fun space opera, and I think this is a trilogy? I could be completely off on that, but I, I thought that that was the case. And yeah, I mean, it just seems like a really fun action sci-fi, you know, adventure. So I think this would be the type of sci-fi that I would really enjoy. And like I said, if there is a TV show, like I definitely want to get on top of this. But yeah, I feel like I've heard positive things from, you know, people that I follow and people who I'm friends with. Definitely looking forward to this. And then the other sci-fi series that I want to start is Finder by Suzanne Palmer. I think there are, are at least two books out in this series. I don't know how long the series it is, but this one just sounds really fun. So I think I had found this originally from a blogger that I follow. Could be wrong about that also, but anyway. Fergus Ferguson has been called a lot of names. Thief, con artist, repo man. He prefers the term finder. His latest job should be simple. Find the spacecraft Venetia's sword and steal it back from a room Gilger, an ex-nobleman turned power-hungry trade boss. He'll slip in, decode those ship's compromised AI security, and get out of town, sword in hand. Fergus locates both this person and the ship in the farthest corner of human-inhabited space, a backwater deep space colony called Kearney. But his arrival at the colony is anything but simple. A cable car explosion launches this colony into civil war, and Fergus must ally with <laughs> this person that he was trying to find uh, enemies to navigate a field of space mines and a small army of hostile mercenaries. What was supposed to be a routine job evolves into negotiating a power struggle between factions. Even worse, Fergus has become increasingly and inconveniently invested in the lives of the locals. It doesn't help that a dangerous alien species Fergus thought mythical proves unsettlingly real and their ominous triangle ships keep following him around. Foolhardy, eccentric, reckless, whatever he's called, Fergus will need all the help he can get to take back the sword and maybe save this colony from destruction in the process. So this just sounds really fun. It sounds humorous. Also, this just seems really interesting and, you know, kind of space opera-y, I guess. But, you know, I think our main character, it, like even on the back, it's like he's a charming and perfect, always in trouble and a most resourceful rogue. So that sounds interesting. Entertaining. I like that we have some sort of mythical alien species. I think that sounds really promising. Definitely want to know more about them. And I like that they have triangle ships that keep following him around. So yeah, I mean, I think the backwater colony could be interesting, especially if they end up kind of being isolated or anything like that. Like, that could be fun. Okay, so then we have three fantasy series that I will talk about. So the first one is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. So this is a YA fantasy, and I've been meaning to read this for forever. I've heard really good things about it and just like have not read it for some unknown reason. So I mean, that, that could be widely applied to all the books on my TBR, honestly. In a world ruled by fierce warrior queens, a grand empire was built upon the backs of Phoenix Riders, legendary warriors who soared through the sky on wings of fire until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. So 16 years later, Veronica is a war orphan who dreams of becoming a phoenix rider like the heroes of old. After a shocking betrayal from her controlling sister, she strikes out alone to find the riders, even if that means disguising herself as a boy to join their ranks. Just as she finally feels like she belongs, her sister turns up and reveals a tangled web of lies between them that will change everything. And meanwhile, the new empire has learned of the riders' return and it intends to destroy them once and for all. So basically, yeah, it's an epic fantasy. I 
I don't know if this is a trilogy or not. I know there's at least two. I thought there was a third one for some reason that just recently came out. But anyway, I think there are a lot of elements here that sound really appealing to me. I always love like the Mulan type trope of, I guess, of, uh, you know, disguising yourself as a boy to join you know, whatever company. But I think Phoenix Riders is really interesting that I don't really see Phoenixes in books all that often. So I think that would be fun. Obviously, we'd have some sort of animal companion, which is something I love. And then we have a tense relationship, I think, between our sisters, which could be very epic, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm curious what is happening in this empire. It's one that I just like want to push myself to finally read. <laughs> Then I have The Night's Rain by Jen Williams. So I did kind of want to read this in 2021, but you know, it just didn't happen. And I just like was kind of in a big fantasy slump for a lot of, I think, really like the second half of 2021 for whatever reason. But I feel like this is one that sounds super great. I've heard a lot of great, great things about it in general. So hopefully I like it. I do have all three books in the series, so, you know, I can have a little book binge there. The city of Abora that once glittered with gold. Now its streets are stocked by wolves. Tormelin the Oathless has no taste for waiting to die while the realm of his ancestors falls to pieces. Talk about a guilt trip. When eccentric ex explorer Lady Vicenza Vintage de Grazon, no clue if I'm pronouncing that right, offers him employment, he sees a way out. Even when they're joined by a fugitive witch with a tendency to set things on fire, the prospect of facing down monsters and retrieving artifacts is preferable to the abomination left behind. But not everyone is willing to let the empire collapse, and the adventurers are soon drawn into a tangled conspiracy of magic and war. The Drelia are coming, and the ninth rain must fall. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure I butchered a lot of that pronunciation, but that's okay. So this seems like a really fun epic fantasy. I feel like the eccentric explorer lady kind of gives me the similar vibes as like the Lady Trent series by Marie Brennan, which I love. So I mean, I could be completely off base about that, but I think that would be really fun if, if that is the case. And you know, I, I'm, I feel like we have a ragtag group of I like the uh, the fugitive witch, the, the sound of her, and then you know. What kind of monsters do we have here? I really like the premise of like retrieving artifacts. That's very much like an Indiana Jones type vibe. So I think there are a lot of things that sound very appealing to me. So hopefully I enjoy it, especially because I do have <laughs> the other two books in the series. And that would be kind of a shame if I didn't like this one. So yeah, I'm, I definitely want to read this probably sooner rather than later, you know, hopefully early 2022 for this. And finally, the last book that I will talk about today is Malice by John Gwynn. Now, <laughs> I've been meaning to get to this again for ages. I've heard mostly positive things about it. I think I've heard as well that the, it's like the beginning part is pretty slow and then kind of picks up from there. And I don't know, just generally, uh, this is something that I really want to try out. And I've been intimidated by it because it is massive. I made a video, I made a video at some point in 2021 that was like about the most intimidating books on my TBR. And this was definitely on there. And then I proceeded to not read it. So I really would like to push myself to read this. I know it's an epic fantasy series. So basically we have Corbin who wants nothing more than to be a warrior under King Brennan's rule to protect and serve, but that day will come all too soon and the price he plays will be in blood. Evnis has sacrificed too much it seems, but what he wants, the power to rule, will soon be in his grasp and nothing will stop him once he has started on his path. Veridus is the newest member of the warband for the High Prince, Nathair. He is one of the most skilled swordsmen to come out of his homeland, yet he's always in the shadow of his older brother. And Nathair has ideas and a lot of plans. Many of them don't involve his father, the High King, nor does he agree with his father's idea to summon his fellow kings to council. The banished lands have a violent past where armies have been and giants clashed in battle, but now giants stir anew, stones weep blood, and there are sightings of giant worms. Those who can still read the signs see a threat far greater than the ancient wars. For if the Black Sun gains ascendancy, mankind's hopes and dreams will fall to dust. This definitely seems like an epic high fantasy, so that could be really fun hopefully you know I kind of snap out of this weird fantasy slump situation and like actually get back into reading epic high fantasy but yeah I mean it seems like we have some interesting characters here certainly I'm intrigued by the fact that we have giant worms that sounds fun and just like giants and who knows what other sort of creatures and mythical things and I don't know magic who knows what all is happening in here but yep if this has been on my TBR for too long, I really need to try it out <laughs> and then, you know, hopefully I will enjoy it and then I can continue the series. So I think in this first series there are four books and then there's a follow-up series with, I'm not, maybe on another four books, I'm not exactly sure, but yep, plenty of, uh, plenty of things to read and, you know, I think they're all massive chunky books, so that's, that's quite fun. <laughs> so those are the books that I want to mention today. Obviously, I will be starting more series than just these in 2022, but these are the ones that like I really would like to prioritize to read and like hopefully making this video will help me 
actually start them, especially some of those like chunky fantasy books. So yeah, I guess let me know in the comments if you read any of these books or think you might pick them up. And again, if you also have any of these books and are kind of struggling to start them like I am, let me know if you want to buddy read them at all. I'm always up for that. I think that's a lot of fun. So for your question of the day, what are some of the series that you would like to start in 2022? So I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link's in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.